Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear students. Uh, today we are going to start yes, class 10 physics, uh, subject physics. Today, the topic which we will cover today is 10.2 and 10.3 topic we will cover today. The pages uh, which we uh, the, these topics are on 6, 7, and 8. So, our topic is before starting the topic uh, that is damped oscillation. I would like to introduce some useful terms related to this topic, uh, related to the topic damped oscillation. First of all, ideal ideal system. Uh, I will like I would like to introduce the definition of ideal system. It is a system in the absence of any resistance or friction is called an ideal system. Uh, you, you might know when we discussed uh, ball example of ball and ball system, I told you uh, what is the, there is a friction present between ball and ball system, which will reduce the motion, motion, of, the, uh, motion of the ball. If there is no friction present in the ball and ball system, what will happen? The ball will indefinitely move and it will not stop because there is no friction present. So ideal system is a system in which there is no friction. But, uh, but, uh, but in practical life, it is impossible uh, to remove or delete all type of friction. There is a friction exist uh, in the daily practical life example. In the daily practical life example, there is a, a friction exists. But I am talking about ideal system. Ideal, in ideal system, there is no resistance or friction present. So, the, when the next uh, uh, useful term is damped. What does this damp mean? The friction reduces the mechanical energy of the system as the time passes. And the motion, and the motion is said to be damped. The damping reduces the amplitude of the vibration of the motion. Uh, I will give you the example. Uh, we, will, we will show you the graph for this. Suppose you have a graph between uh, time and the displacement. And displacement is taken on the y-axis and our uh, time is taken on the x-axis. What is happening? Uh, dam, I'm, I'm explaining you the dam. Uh, the more this 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 term damp. So in this case, uh, when when I throw uh, suppose I throw the ball, what will happen? The amplitude of the ball is very high, but as the time passes, the amplitude amplitude goes on decreasing. Look, the amplitude here is more. In this case, the amplitude is reduced, and in this case, amplitude is more reduced. And by the time passes, the amplitude is going to be decrease, 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 decrease. And since there is a friction present in the in the in the earth or when we hit the ground, there is a friction bit present. So it will after some time the ball its amplitude will goes on decreasing, 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 and at last its amplitude will be zero and it will come to at rest. So this is uh, how we explain the damped, the term damped. Now I'm going towards, uh, uh, moving towards my topic, which is 10.2. That is on page number six, which is called damped oscillation. The definition of damped oscillation is the oscillation of a system in the presence of some resistive force are damped oscillation. If you got to remember this because this is uh, very important according to the uh, definition of the uh, damp, uh, definition of damped oscillation. This is the definition of damped oscillation. This is the definition, you know, the, in exams, the definition comes two marks of two marks. If they ask you what is damped oscillation, so you will give this definition that the oscillation of a system in the presence of some resistive force are damped oscillation. This which is present blue box on page number seven. So I also, I'm going to explain you that I also have given you the example of uh, ball hit on the ground. So the amplitude of the ball is very high. Then 
low going low going low going low and at the at the last the amplitude is go on decreasing so this is called damp oscillations i have already told you no so the next one is uh, very one practical example uh, of the the damped oscillation is shock absorber. In shock absorber, shock absorber in automobiles is one practical example of damped motion. Uh, this is also an example of damped motion. What happened? A shock absorber. This is you can see the uh, image on the right hand side, uh, which shows this is these are the pistons. So pistons are basically this is the upper part of the fridge uh, piston. And that this is the lower part of the uh, lower part of the shock absorber. This is the upper part of the shock absorber, and this is the lower part of the shock absorber, right? So, it shock absorber. Our shock absorber consists of two things. One is piston. So, this one is piston, and this is piston rod, where which on which piston is attached. This is piston rod, and this one is piston. And this is oil in it. The oil, this this is the oil column. What happened? The there is no vibrations. The car is not passing over the, uh, not traveling over the bumps. So uh, the our piston is in relaxed position or in extension cycle. This is in extension cycle. The upper part of the uh, shock absorber in this case, the upper part of the shock absorber firmly attached to the car body. This is the upper part of the shock absorber, which is firmly attached to our car. And uh, when when the car travels over the bumps, bump in jump on the road, and the car vibrate violently. You have seen the car vibrate, start vibrating uh, violently. What happens? The shock absorber damps this one. What is the function of shock absorber? If there is no shock absorber in our car or automobiles. What will happen? Uh, our body will be uh, in body could be injured right the body could be injured so in order to uh, save from injury uh, the every automobiles uh, have piston every automobile has a piston installed in it right so it has two parts upper part and the lower part and there is the oil inside the uh, inside the shock absorber these are the two main parts of the shock absorber what happened whenever the whenever the car our car travels on the pump on the road and the car vibrate violently the shock absorber damped these vibration the uh, the vibration produced when the car passing over the uh, bumps uh, the shock absorber damped this vibration and convert this energy into heat energy of the oil you know we have the why we are putting the oil inside uh, the heat it will uh, the convert the energy into heat of the energy of the oil. So what happened when the car pass travel over the bumps? The, there is a new position. This will not the position. The second position will be the you no know, compression cycle. So what will happen? The vibration produced during uh, passing over the bumps. This vibration uh, convert the energy uh, into heat energy of the oil and we will be safe uh, from any type of injury caused by this so this is the one practical practical example of the shock absorber now we move towards uh, this is end of the topic uh, or end of this topic which is damp was damp oscillation now we are moving towards new topic our new topic we are going to start our new topic which is wave motion uh, that is on page number seven wave motion so wave motion is 10.3 first of all i give you the definition of uh, wave what is wave what is actually the wave i give you the definition wave is the disturbance in the medium which cause the particles of the medium to undergo vibratory motion about their mean position in equal interval of time. What is wave? Wave is produced when we disturb the medium. I will, uh, when we move ahead, 
uh, to our lecture. So I will explain you what is the disturbance and what is the mean actually the meaning of the wave disturbance. So what happens before uh, a carrier? So what is the important waves play a very important role in our daily life in our life. It carries the energy. It carries the energy. Mean it uh, carries the energy from one place, take information over large distances. It has to uh, carry energy. It carries energy, and second, take information over large distances. And third one, wave requires some vibrating or oscillating source. I will I will explain you in a short. But uh, so now we are. This is the wave. So wave is basically the disturbance in the medium. What does this mean? So wave has uh, two parts. One is the crest and one is the trough. The upper portion of the wave is called crest, while the lower portion of the wave is called the trough. And my amplitude is this distance. My amplitude is this distance, right? My amplitude is this distance. So this is crest and this is trough. The distance, the conjecture distance between two waves, my wave is starting from here and it will go all the way down and then coming back to this, this position. So from this position to this position, this is called the wavelength. These are the important terms uh, associated with the waves. Crest, trough, the upper part of the wave is called crest. The lower part of the wave is called trough, and this is our amplitude. This is the baseline, and from baseline, this this line to this one, this is called the amplitude. This could also be the amplitude. This could also be the, and this could also be the amplitude, right? So this is the amplitude, and can the distance from this this point to this point is called wave, or if you start wavelength could be this one as well if you start your wave from here and it will come back to this point so it means this is the wave one complete distance uh, round trip one complete distance from here this could be also the wave if you start the wave from here this is also the wavelength from here if you start the wave from here the wave this is the Total wavelength. So, our, so we we studied about crest, trough, amplitude, and the the term wavelength. Now, <clears throat> what is going to do this? What we are going to do this? We are going to <clears throat> study two activities related to the waves. Well, I am going to demonstrate these two activities with the help of the uh, figures. So this is uh, my activity number 10.1 which says they are produced by dipping a pencil in a water tub and this is my activity 2 uh, they are produced in a row. These two activities are mentioned in wave motion topic on page number 7. First of all I will explain the activity 10.1. What is that? I read the activity 10.1 for you. And this activity is this one. And wave produced by dipping a pencil in a water tub. What will happen? Dip one end of the pencil into a tub of water and move it up and down vertically. The disturbance, the form of ripples produces water waves, which moves away from the source. When the wave reaches small piece of cork, Floating near the disturbance, it moves. Uh, disturbance it moves up and down about its original position or mean position, while the wave will travel outwards. The net displacement of the cork is zero. The cork repeats its vibratory motion about its mean position. So, first of all, I explain you what where is the pencil, where is the cork, and what where, what, is, what are the waves, right? So. This is my pencil. You can also see on your textbook, page number seven, you can see, see the same picture on page number seven of your 10th uh, class book. This is a pencil and this is our cork. cork. 
So this activity is 10.1, wave produced by dipping a pencil in water. So this is the pencil, this is my cork, this is the position of cork. So it's written over here, cork, and this is the pencil. So I, when I gave you the example of, when I explained the example of waves, so I, I, I told you wave is a disturbance in the medium, which causes the particles of medium to undergo vibratory motion about their mean position in equal interval of time. What does this mean? So the pencil is, the, the power is the pencil is doing pencil pencil is doing basically is creating the disturbance in the medium is creating the disturbance so i told you when i explained you the uh, wave wave motion so wave is the disturbance in the medium which cause the particle of medium to undergo vibratory motion about the mean position in equal interval of time right so so this pencil is causing the disturbance in the medium. I told you wave also requires some vibrating or oscillating source. So in pencil in this case, pencil in this case is the vibrating source uh, in, my, uh, in my activity 10.1. What will happen if I disturb, if I create the disturbance with the help of pencil, the wave will generate. These, these arrow lines, these lines, are waves right so my waves since i also told you carrier of energy they carry the energy they take information of a large distance so what will happen after some time uh, these waves will move outwards and reaches to the uh, cork which is over here the cork will not move but it will uh, start vibrating about their mean position up and down uh, without changing its position it will not go here it will not go there it will remain here and it will start vibrating up and down up and down um, uh, vibrating about their mean positions so it means uh, we disturbance we created a disturbance over here but the waves uh, carry energy so our energy transfer from this point to this point this is called a wave produced by dipping a pencil into water tap. Our next example, which is also on the page number seven, the activity uh, 10.2, our activity is 10.2. I read the activity 10.2 for you. Take a rope, uh, this is a rope, take a rope, this is a rope, it has two end. One is the fixed end and one I am moving the rope with my hand, right? So here is the point which is lying or I have marked on the rope, right? So say this is the point P. So it has two things. One, uh, when I flip, flip the rope, uh, it has crest and it has a trough over here, right? The bottom uh, part of the uh, wave is called trough and the while the top part of the wave is called the crest. So uh, this is my fixed hand or I say I said sport. This is my hand uh, where I'm applying the force and flipping the rope and my point P is moving up and down. My point is P. In this case, my when I flip the rope over here, uh, since the waves carry energy, so my energy, my wave will carry the energy and after some time this energy will be transformed to this point. From this point to this point. And my P point which is lying on the road will move up and down. Up and down. In this case, up and in this case, down. Right? So, <clears throat> So take a rope and mark a point P on it. Tie one end of the rope with a sport and stretch the rope by holding its other hand. This is holding, I'm holding this, uh, my one hand and it has other end which is fixed. Hand. Now flipping the rope up and down regularly will set up a wave in the rope which will travel towards the fixed end. This is the fixed end. Right. The point P on the rope will start vibrating. The point P on the rope will start vibrating up and down as the wave passes across it. The motion of the point P will be perpendicular to the direction of the motion of the wave. The motion of the wave is this 
and point P is moving up, so it is perpendicular. Perpendicular means it is making 90 degree angle with this pole, right? So this my point point P is this one in this direction, and my spore this the wave is moving in this direction. So these these are moving 90 degree angles, so they are perpendicular to each other. So this is the activity 10.2. I also explained uh, you the uh, this one that. Uh, Lower part of the wave is called trough, the upper part of the wave is called crust, and this is the movement of energy. My, I flip the uh, rope from here, and wave since wave carry energy, so it is carrying the energy from this this end to this end, right? Vibration of rope, the rope is moving like this, right? So this is the movement of energy in this direction, and vibration of rope in this direction. So. Next, uh, we studied uh, the definition of the wave. So I again uh, start, uh, read the definition for you. Uh, wave is a disturbance in the medium which causes the particle of the medium to undergo vibratory motion about their mean position in equal interval of time. Now, so what does this mean? Type of waves. So wave has few types. There is uh, mechanical waves. Mechanical waves are those waves which require medium for their propagation is called mechanical waves. I tell you what is medium. Medium is actually uh, where the thing is passing. Like when I'm talking to you, it's mean there is a medium between me and you and the medium is air. If there is no air present, it's mean uh, my voice cannot reach to to your end. So in order to my voice reach to your end, there must be the medium present and the medium is air. So mechanical waves are those waves which require medium for their propagation or are called a mechanical. The example of mechanical waves are water waves, sound waves, then uh, waves producing strings and spring as we discussed, uh, wave uh, produced in strings and strings. These are strings, you know, we have already talk, talked about strings. So waves produced in strings and strings and uh, sound waves is also the example. The sound waves require medium and that medium is air. Water wave also required medium. So, so water waves, sound waves, uh, wave produced in strings and strings are the example of mechanical waves. Now, electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic waves are those waves which do not require any medium for their propagation. Propagation, you should know what is the meaning of propagation. Propagation is motion. Whenever if you want to travel uh, the electromagnetic wave, there is no medium required. But if you want to travel the mechanical waves, there must be a medium required, which is the air. But in case of electromagnetic waves, there is no medium required for their propagation. Example of <coughs> example of electromagnetic wave is X-rays, because X-rays do not require any medium. It only not only the medium medium is not air only. It could be the vacuum as well. But uh, in case of electromagnetic waves, we do not require any medium. So. Example of electromagnetic waves are X-rays, heat and light waves and television waves are the examples of electromagnetic waves. Uh, students, I hope you understand uh, this topic which we cover, uh, the topic which we cover today, 10.2 uh, and 10.3. So the 10.2 I hope you understand and understand this topic. Thank you. And I'm going to give you uh, again, I'm going to give you explain you a little bit again to you or quick recap for you what we studied today. Useful terms, we studied two topics, 10.2, 10.2. 10.2 topic and 10.3 topic. So the terms associated with 10.2 topic, which is 
damped oscillation. We studied today damped oscillation. So in damped oscillation, before studying the damped oscillation, we I would like to introduce you the useful terms related to this topic. Ideal system, critical system in the absence of any resistance or friction is called an ideal system. In the ideal system, I gave you the example of ball and ball system. I told you in a ball and ball system, there must be a friction pattern. If there is no friction pattern between ball and ball, what will happen? The ball will indefinitely move. So if, if it is an ideal system, ideal system means there is no friction or distance pattern. It means the ball, in ball and ball system, ball will, uh, ball will move indefinitely. Because there is no resistance present, but in practical life, there must be the resistance present or friction present uh, in practical life. First, uh, as you have seen in ball and ball system, uh, after some time, uh, the ball start stop uh, vibrating and will it will come to at rest because there is a friction present between ball and ball system. Next, we studied the damped uh, topic. The friction reduces the mechanical energy of the system as the time passes and the motion is said to be damped. The damping reduces the amplitude of the vibration of the motion. What is damped actually? This is damped. It means when we, if I take the example of ball, what will happen? Uh, when, if I throw the ball, it will go at a maximum height. And you have, you might have seen the ball uh, will come to at rest after some time. Uh, or first of all, its amplitude is at peak. Then it will amplitude will reduce. Then its amplitude will reduce, and keep on reducing, keep on reducing, keep on reducing, and its amplitude go goes down. This is the example of damp. This is called damped. This is. This is the example of damp. So, this is damp. And next, uh, damp oscillation. We talked about damp oscillation. The oscillation of a system in the presence of some resistive force are damp oscillation. In the blue box, you can find this definition on the blue box. And then I gave you the example of uh, damp oscillation. Uh, the amplitude is goes on decreasing. So, next, uh, we talked about very practical example of damped oscillation, shock absorber in our car, automobiles, or in cars, or in even, even, even in bikes. There is a shock absorber. So shock absorber have two end. One end is fixed, uh, up, attached to the upper mount, and the lower, lower, lower mount, attached to the lower mount. So it consists of uh, a piston. This is the piston, and this is the piston rod, where the piston is attached. So one more thing in it is oil. So there are the two things in it. One is oil and one is piston. The upper part of the shock absorber firmly attached to the car's body. When the cars travel over the bumps on the road and the car vibrate violently, the shock absorber damps this vibration and convert their energy into heat energy of the oil. As I told you, the when we pass over the car, when our cars pass over the bumps, it starts vibrating uh, violently. So if there is no piston present in the car, is no, no piston is attached in the car, what will happen? We could have an injury. But in order to avoid injury, they have, uh, car manufacturers has put uh, the piston, they have mount the piston um, in our car. So in order to save us from injury. So it consists of two parts, piston and the oil. Next we, uh, so this is the end of our uh, this topic, damped oscillation. Now, then I will move towards uh, wave motion. We discussed about wave motion. A wave is a disturbance in the medium, which cause the particle of the medium to undergo vibratory motion about their mean position in equal interval of time. So I told you wave plays wave wave uh, plays very important role. Uh, in, in daily life, like carry, it is a carrier of energy. Take and wish information over large distances. Wave requires some vibratory or oscillating. So these are the three things very important. So we discuss now. Before going to in detail for this, I will like to introduce you the wave. So wave, I I made you made you understand 
the crest, then trough, then amplitude, and the wave length. The important terms related to waves. The upper part of the wave is called crest, and the lower part of the wave is called trough. And this, from this wave to this wave, is called amplitude, the maximum displacement. So, crest, trough, amplitude, and the wavelength. This is our wavelength. Now, then we discussed about two activities. We discussed about two activities: wave producing a dipping a pencil, water filled water tub. So, this is the vibrating source. Pencil is vibrating source. It is producing the waves. So, what will happen after some time? We 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 disturb the medium over here. The after some time, the waves since waves carry energy, so our energy will pass over to the cork, and our cork will start vibrating up and down. It will start vibrating without dissolving motion, without moving anywhere. It will start vibrating up and down motion. So this is our cork. So this is our pencil. This is a is a vibrating source. Then we discuss the second activity. 10.2 wave produced in the rock. So wave will uh, will be produced in the rock. So what happened? Um, the wave has this this rope has two ends. One end is uh, fixed uh, is attached to the fixed end, and the other end is in uh, other end of the rope is in in our hand. What will happen? We, when we flip the rope, what will happen? Since we have carried energy, so and we have marked the point P on on the rope. What will happen when we flip the flip our hand or uh, flip the rope? Uh, that this point will move up. P point will move up and down, up and down. The upper part is called crest, and the lower part is called trough. So, after some time, my energy will from here uh, pass to this point. After some time, the energy will goes to this point. So, we discuss about these two activities. Then, uh, these are all uh, mentioned on your textbook page number seven. Then we discussed about types of waves, mechanical waves. Mechanical waves are the waves which require medium for their propagations or for their motion. Propagation means motion. So we discussed uh, medium, I told you, medium could be air, medium could be vacuum. But in order to, uh, two, if two person wants to uh, communicate with each other or they want to convey their message, there, there is a medium present between them. Otherwise, if there is no air, we can uh, our voice cannot be reached to other person uh, ears. So, in, for for their propagation, mechanical waves requires medium for their propagation, and medium is air. So, water waves, sound waves, they produce in spring and strings. All all the example of mechanical waves. Then we discussed about electro electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are those waves which do not require any medium for their propagation. Example of electromagnetic waves are X rays, heat, and light waves, and Dirichlet waves are all the examples of um, electromagnetic waves. A student, uh, this is our end of uh, post topic 10.2 and 10.2, 10.3. If you have any question regarding these two topics you have you can ask me free uh, you can ask me feel free to ask Students, I will uh, give you the homework uh, regarding these two topics. Uh, our homework uh, is damped uh, oscillation. Uh, damped oscillation 
um, and wave motion, you need to read these to two topics uh, three, four times and also uh, try to make their figures on your copies and uh, wave also uh, write it down and memorize the blue definitions um, like uh, definition of wave, mechanical waves, electromagnetic waves. If you if you practice it more and more, you will be. I hope you will definitely understand this topic uh, more clearly. So my message is to read this again and again, and also write this down. Thank you very much. Thank you.